What we've been doing, uh, I just want to set this up as sort of a problem. What I'm really interested in doing is making molecules that can do the things that proteins can do, but that can be designed by human beings. People are talking about positional control, so run the nanometer scale. I think about positional control on the angstrom scale, because I want to organize functional groups in three-dimensional space to build active sites that can accelerate chemical reactions the way enzymes do. It's the most important thing, I think, that we need to do, because then we could make things uh, from, from cheap starting materials. Whoops. Okay, just lost video there. Okay, so, um, so um, we could make molecules from cheap uh, starting materials. And so what my group thinks about a lot is um, how to assemble building blocks into molecules that are about, you know, two by two nanometers that have active sites where catalysis can happen. An important thing that we would do with this is, for instance, glucose is a very reactive molecule. We eat it, it gets into our, it's in our bodies. It, over time, cross-links proteins in the extracellular matrix. And by the time you're 90 years old, about 90% of the cross-links in your extracellular matrix are due to this compound here called glucosapine. If we could make catalysts that could selectively go in and cleave this group someplace, then potentially it could be used to treat a lot of diseases of aging. I'm starting to feel this now. I want to solve this problem quickly, right? Um, so the idea would be to make a small catalyst that would be about five kilodaltons, smaller than most many, many proteins, but that would be highly structured and would go in selectively bind this group, cleave it somewhere, and we could discover catalysts that could do this. If we could make millions of these catalysts, uh, then you could make a molecule with glucosapine in it, with a quencher, with a fluorophore on it, and um, you throw it in with the catalyst. If it lights up, if a bead lights up, you've got a catalyst that can do that job. To discover those things, I think, is one of the most important things to do. All right, what would these look like? Well, my lab for the last 20 years has been developing a sort of new molecular building blocks that are these cyclic building blocks. They have two amino acids on them, and they have a functional group on them. I'm going to work out. Go over here. Um, they have a functional group on them, and um, these building blocks link together through pairs of amide bonds. So we create these ladder molecules that have functional groups sticking out the sides of them. And then what we're doing in the last couple of years is we're starting to tie them together to make macromolecules that are like five kilodaltons. And we're using them to build atomically precise filters, uh, molecular catalysts, molecules that combine small molecules for environmental sensing. And uh, in the last two years, we've, been, we've made two and a half million of these molecules that can bind proteins for the Department of Defense to, dis to develop, rapidly develop diagnostics for new emerging biological threats. Uh, we have, in the last 20 years, made molecules that bind proteins. We designed this molecule that binds MDM2 uh, at, at uh, nanomolar um, uh, binding efficiency, gets into cells by passive diffusion, and actually stabilizes the protein in cell culture. We have also made catalysts. This is a molecule that we designed and demonstrated that um, can accelerate a transesterification reaction. And so I, we've done detailed kinetics on it, and, and it is a catalyst. It turns over multiple times. Uh, three years ago, I went to the Department of Defense, who've been funding me for the last sort of dozen years, and I said, we could make molecules now that could bind proteins the way antibodies do. They would be five kilodaltons in size, and um, they would be indestructible. And if you put them into diagnostic tests, like lateral flow assays, like the test that you all took coming into the room here, we have been developing uh, tests like that for the last two years. These tests that we could make with these molecules could um, last decades instead of lasting six months. And the DOD is very interested in that because they have like 50 of these tests. They have to turn them over every six months, and they have to stockpile them. It's very expensive to them, so they said yes. They said to me, though, we're not going to fund your academic lab because we don't get anything out of academic research. What we want you to do is start a company. So I took sabbatical. 2019, and I started a company. Hired six chemists, two of my former students, and we started working on this. And then we hit COVID, and everything went really fast. Um, we have, the kind of molecule we're making is we're taking three of these segments. Each one of them is about one and a half kilodaltons. We're making random segments. We're linking them together onto a core. And you make this molecule that's sort of like a claw. It's big enough to wrap around a protein. 
we, um, so I hired chemists, we've got a team of people working up in North Philadelphia, and um, we've been just sort of running under the radar making these molecules. First thing we had to do was scale up our chemistry. We were making them 40 grams at a time, our building blocks. So we contracted Wuxi Aptek in China to make 15 kilograms of our building block intermediates. And we have drums of building block intermediates, all four of these stereoisomers. So these, each one has a specific shape. So we have drums of this stuff. Then what we do is we do some further chemical processing on it. We attach functional groups like the side chains of amino acids. We chose a whole bunch of different polar heterocycles that are already found in drugs because we want things that are stable in biological solution. So we just slap all these different polar heterocycles onto our building blocks and we make two different stereoisomers of each of them, mirror image compounds. So these, this is what it looks like. We have um, 20 bottles of RR building blocks and then over there are 20 bottles of SS building blocks those ones are all mirror images of these ones, but we make like quantities you can hold in your hand of this stuff. Then we put it onto robots that we bought with you know, the DOD support. We have two of these uh, chorus uh, synthesizers. And when we're in sustained operation, we're making about six, we're making 60 random segments like this, one and a half kilodaltons with four different functional groups, 10 stereo centers. Every aspect of that we can control and we're making 60 of them a week. And we've done this for week after week after week. In the last um, two years, we've made 700 of these molecules. We know the three-dimensional shape of every one of them because I can give you a plastic model set and you can tell me what they look like by snapping it together. I have written about a million lines of code that has a built-in compiler to solve some of the problems that Jonathan uh, pointed out uh, earlier, it's, uh, it's, it's based on, the back end is LLVM, it's a fusion of C++ and Common Lisp, and I wrote my own compiler for this. We have a JupyterLab interface for this to help us design these molecules. It's open source on the internet, you can download it right now. Um, I won't talk, I can talk more about that, I can talk about any of this for hours. Um, but what we did in terms of making the two and a half million libraries is we're doing DNA encoded library synthesis. So we have 700 of these little segments, and what we do is on 10 micrometer beads, polystyrene beads that are the size of human cells, we um, have a head group, and then we link together 100 different of our segments here, and we put on a DNA tag that codes for those 100 segments. Then we mix, and we pull, split out the resin again, we put 100 different segments here, again a tag, repeat that. 100 times 100 times 100, you get a million compounds, right? So that's where we get our million compounds. So we have a million of these molecules, each one on a 10 micrometer bead with a DNA tag that codes for it. Then the DNA, the, the Department of Defense gave us some dangerous organisms to work with that they wanted us to discover. A BSL-3 and a BSL-2 organism, we screened them in a biosafety level three lab. That's what it looks like when we bind. The green bead is a hit, the black ones are misses. We tune it so we get about one hit out of 3,000 misses. Just about done. We resynthesize the hits, we squirt them into nitrocellulose, we flow the bacteria that we are uh, trying to bind, and we have four different Simbas here, four of our molecules, they all capture the bacteria. And now we're, we're in the middle of this project, we've got another 18 months to turn this into diagnostic assays, and I am done. <laughs> So you've got lots of potential molecules to make. So do you take your hits and use any genetic algorithm or anything like that to try and search the space in a fitness-based way? We are just about to start doing that. We are All right, I have an algorithm you can have if you want. That does. It looks for AMPs. So you, you kind of mentioned that these things are very stable. So I assume they're also biocompatible as well as basically bioorthogonal. Is that really the, the point of using this very uh, different chemical backbone? The point of using it is to get control of shape on the angstrom scale. Mm, so this is more rigid than a peptide backbone, for much, example. Much, yes. much. Peptides are floppy, spaghetti things. These are ladders. So uh, it's incredibly cool. I, just to the, the sort of like the design point, um, 
how how should we think about like what these can and can't do? And it's like if I was like, okay, I want to use like think about uh, a functionality. How, is there a way to like model what they can and can't do well? The things that we want them to do are to stabilize transition states of reactions. If you want to accelerate chemical reactions, so the idea is to, get, to build a scaffold, a pocket where you can position specific functional groups in three dimensional space to stabilize a particular transition state. What can it do? It could catalyze any reaction. We could take carbon dioxide, sunlight, water, turn it into fuel. We could break or make any bond the way nature does with 20 amino acids. They are, the goal is to make something like proteins, but that is much more designable than proteins um, because it's rigid. Binding to things, the goal is to present functional groups to, map, to match surfaces on proteins to bind them. I can go on, to, we can talk more about it. Cool. All right, I'm, I'm going to cut off questions, um, and we will invite Neve up to the stage.